It's been more than 10 years since Platinum Games unleashed its first project on the world, and since then, the Sosaka-based development house has defined and redefined the action game, with titles such as Bayonetta, Vanquish, and Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. But it was the fusion of action and role-playing in Nier Automata that perhaps indicated a desire to take things further. Astral Chain is the next step in this evolution. Combining platinum quality action with exploration, investigation, storytelling, and puzzle solving, Astral Chain stands as one of Platinum's most ambitious projects to date. Today then, we're going to explore the visuals of Astral Chain and its unique game design while also checking out its performance in both Switch modes, while also chatting with the game's director, Takahisa Taura, who previously served as lead game designer on Nier Automata. So, without further delay, let's dive in. Astral Chain is a difficult game to describe. It's true that like most Platinum developed games, combat plays a significant role, but this time, the scope of the experience has been expanded. It has been described as a synergetic action game, a descriptor which refers to the eponymous Astral Chain itself, a chain which links the player character with a being known as a Legion, and this mechanic influences almost every aspect of the gameplay. From combat and investigation to simple traversal, the bond between the player and this legion is key. Uh, I'm a huge Pokemon fan. And, uh, you know, I, I, the, the game mechanic where the player and another character, i.e. Pokemon, uh, fighting uh, side by side um, is something that I've uh, uh, loved growing up and uh, is I, I just love that sort of atmosphere in a game. The Pokemon connection is interesting then. You do engage enemies using a variety of Legion types which you can capture throughout the game, kind of like Pokemon, but the setting and core game design are entirely different. Yes, it's an action game at its core, but the introduction of exploration, large fantastical dungeons, and a base of operations all result in something that feels decidedly more expansive than I had expected. In terms of atmosphere and visuals then, Astral Chain is Platinum's take on cyberpunk, influenced by the designs of Ghost in the Shell and Appleseed among others, and it shows. The world is split between these puddle-soaked streets dilapidated back alleys, the pristine Neuron HQ, and this alternate dimension from which the threat has arisen. It's a beautiful game, with a different look than most other projects from this team. At Platinum Games, we've been using the same uh, in-house engine for uh, our past projects. Um, but Having said that, this, uh, the engine has been evolving uh, over time, so um, regardless of what platform that we're uh, developing a game for, uh, you know, the engine is evolving with, with um, uh, the games that we uh, develop. Expectedly, Astro Chain is indeed based on Platinum's in-house technology, and there is a focus more on pushing the Switch hardware this time as opposed to targeting higher frame rates. This has its good and bad points, of course, but Astrotain does at least look fantastic overall. For starters, though, we should discuss the resolution. Unlike the ports of Bayonetta, Astrotain can reach resolutions exceeding 720p, at least in docked mode. However, this time the team has opted to utilize dynamic resolution to help stabilize performance. That means when docked, Resolution typically hangs between 720p and 900p, often hitting around the 810p mark on average. This is paired with a post-process solution for anti-aliasing, leading to a slightly sharper but surprisingly murky looking image. The main image quality issue stems from in-surface aliasing, which is difficult to clean up. But honestly, considering the hardware, the image quality is good enough and a marked improvement over Bayonetta. Portable mode then predictably maxes out at 720p and, like docked mode, uses dynamic resolution scaling. There's a distinct difference here, however, resulting in something we've not really seen before on the Switch. Basically, in portable mode, the game runs without any anti-aliasing at all, and when the resolution does dip below 720p, which is thankfully quite rare, it's scaled back up without linear filtering, resulting in uneven pixel edges. When blowing this up via the capture then, the results certainly aren't great. You can see the artifacts in the edges. 
but on the small Switch screen itself, it's nearly impossible to see, and the result is, the game looks very sharp on the Switch when played in portable mode, and arguably nicer than docked when blown up on a large 4K TV. This approach, however, is fascinating. We don't usually see such a dramatic difference in terms of image treatment between the two, it's usually just a drop in resolution. But taking portable into account during development is critical to making a great Switch game, and that obviously includes things like the UI. No matter uh, whether you play the game in TV mode or handheld mode, uh, whether the game is good, uh, it doesn't make a difference. So, uh, in t system wise, uh, we didn't make any special adjustments uh, based on the mode that people might play the game in. The only thing that we did uh, do a lot of trial and error in was that we had to factor in the small, smaller screen size in handheld mode. So we had we adjusted uh, the, the font size so that uh, text can be clearly uh, read uh, in both either modes. This seems obvious, but it's critical to the development of a good Switch game, nailing that UI in both modes. Astral Chain does a nice job in this regard, of course, but takes things one step further by allowing the player to disable individual pieces of the UI as they see fit. But yeah, looking back overall, the image quality isn't necessarily Astral Chain's strong point. I do, however, feel that the presentation is solid and serves as a showcase of what can be achieved using tried and true techniques. That's right, Astral Chain doesn't push any new technical boundaries, but what is here looks gorgeous. Take this introduction sequence on the bike. What we're looking at is a relatively simplistic tunnel using cube maps for reflections, per pixel motion blur along the sides of the screen and lots of lens flares, not to mention a nice mix of particles and great modeling. But there's really nothing groundbreaking about what's on display. It really is just the smart use of gorgeous art direction, smooth camera work, and these classic techniques. And that's what makes this game so interesting. Throughout, lighting is relatively simplistic and seemingly baked. Reflections are limited to basic cube maps rather than using screen space reflections or other techniques and there's really nothing especially advanced going on. Yet, it all comes together to create something surprisingly beautiful and cohesive. It's a showcase of strong artwork and skilled development above all else. That's not to say it doesn't have a few visual tricks up its sleeve, of course. The depth of field, for instance, is a clever attempt to simulate camera bokeh in a cinematic way, and honestly, it works rather well in most scenes. Then there's the subtle motion blur applied to objects in motion, lending animation additional heft. The particles and billboards are often surprisingly detailed and very well animated. Just look at this fire. The skybox and use of color is just fantastic. So when you look at everything together, it works really well. It feels very cohesive. In fact, I feel it's more attractive overall than the technically superior Nier Automata, which often felt rather rough around the edges and somewhat empty, though I suppose that ties in with the themes as well. It's also worth mentioning that the loading times are kept to a minimum. The transition between Neuron HQ and the city streets tends to be the longest, though it's not really a problem. but loading most other areas is relatively quick and each area is fairly large. Plus, when moving to the other dimension, there's a neat interactive loading screen, which is something that Platinum has always tried to offer in its games. But of course, now we come to performance, and this is where things differ somewhat from your typical Platinum release. Astral Chain targets just 30 frames per second, as opposed to 60, like many of their other games. So why go with 30? Okay. Regarding the frame rate, uh, the decision uh, uh, that we took to, to make it 30 frames per second, uh, you know, at Platinum Games, there are other games that we've developed that runs at this uh, speed. Uh, but uh, for Astral Chain, um, the setting is a really vibrant cyberpunk um, setting with, for example, holograms. Uh, you see a lot of neon lights in the city. Uh, also, there's a, a feature called the iris mode, um, which is a, sort of shows a, a near future cyberpunky um, atmosphere. So we really wanted to, rather than the frame rate, we really wanted to prioritize the graphics and make the 
the vibrant uh, setting come to life. That's not to say battle fluidity wasn't taken into account, however. When we talk about a, a slower frame rate, some people might mistake this for a less dynamic uh, uh, action elements of the game. But uh, you know, use, utilizing uh, Platinum Games' uh, programming and animation uh, skills, uh, we've really not uh, you know, uh, sacrificed on, on that side of the game. Uh, you, you, you can really see this in, when you play Astral Chain in handheld mode. Uh, you, players, I'm sure, will be surprised at how well the game runs. Uh, so I hope people are going to be looking forward to, to that. So how successful were they? Does the game really hold 30 frames per second at least? Well, the good news is that, for the most part, the results here are solid. The game does maintain 30 frames per second in most situations. Exploration is mostly perfect, and running around the world delivers stable performances you would hope. Even these large, open-area maps out in the city aren't really a problem for the game or the Switch. It all feels very fluid. Now, in combat, things are a little more variable. While the target frame rate is reached most of the time, it's certainly not perfect. Take this battle, for instance. There are moments when the frame rate momentarily dips just below the 30 frames per second line before jumping back up. If you look on the left there, you also see minor frame time spikes to 16 milliseconds when the system comes under load. So it's stable enough overall, but it's not perfect. That said, I do feel it's preferable to something like the wonderful 101 on Wii U, which targeted 60 frames per second but rarely maintained it for long, resulting in a rather uneven experience all around. The same goes for the original version of Vanquish, in fact, over on consoles, which was a 30 frames per second game like Astral Chain. So in that sense, it's nice that Astral Chain is at least a very stable game in terms of frame rate, even if it's not quite as high as we would like. Now, if we jump over to portable mode, it's much the same story, with occasional dips below 30 frames per second, but by and large, the frame rate sticks very closely to the 30 frames per second line, with even frame persistence. So yeah, while it's disappointing to a degree that Astral Chain is not 60 frames per second, at least the experience is mostly stable, rather than wildly unstable, as we've seen with some other games from Platinum. But, while performance is generally fine across the game, I do have one unexpected complaint, and this complaint centers on audio. Basically, for reasons unknown to me at least, Astral Chain does not appear to support any form of surround sound. In my 7.1 setup, for instance, the game plays audio only from the left and right channel. The rest of the audio channels remain silent while playing this game. Now, this isn't the first Switch game to exhibit this issue, mind you, but it is strange nonetheless in a big title like this, and it's something to consider. Thankfully, the audio itself is great, and that is especially true of the wonderful soundtrack. I asked Taro-san about the soundtrack and its inspirations even. Regarding the music, uh, I, I personally love rock music. Uh, so I really collected uh, you know, a lot of my favorite tracks and um, brought them uh, to, to a meeting with the, the lead composer. So we decided that the direction for this game was going to be rock music. But, uh, you know, just traditional rock doesn't quite match the cyberpunk uh, setting of the game. So we kind of uh, arranged the, the rockiness uh, into, to try and match the, the world setting as much as possible. It definitely sounds great and it lends the game a wonderful atmosphere. So what's the overall takeaway then? Well, visually speaking, Astro Chain is a great looking Switch title. Sure, image quality isn't top tier, but the visuals on display are often beautiful and the world design itself is rather compelling. It has a unique atmosphere that differs from other Platinum games, and I really enjoyed that. Beyond the presentation, however, the game itself is just highly engaging. While the combat system remains as solid as ever as you would expect, and it features an excellent twist in the form of the legions, it's the overall progression that I found most interesting here. It's a slower paced game than your typical Platinum action title. The exploration and puzzle solving add a lot of variety to the mix. 
While it's ultimately a very different game from something like Deus Ex, it has that same ebb and flow between action and quiet moments, and it really works beautifully. It's also technically sound with a mostly stable frame rate, quick loading, and optimization for both docked and handheld mode. It's just a really well-made Switch game, and it bodes well for Bayonetta 3. But that's it for the moment. If you enjoyed this video, as always, be sure to like and subscribe, ring the notification bell to receive instant updates from Digital Foundry, follow us over on Twitter, and until next time, this is John, signing off.